Hey everybody, Matthew with Tactical Comms. This is part two of the jungle antenna build and I've discovered some things that are pretty interesting and I wanted to share with you before we get too deep into how to put the antenna together. Now in part one I told you about a magic number, 936, and that number is where you start figuring out how long your antenna wires need to be. Well as I put these together I tried my very best to put this antenna together just like I'm going to show you how to do it. I measured my length out and remember 936, it kind of gave us an overall antenna length of not, roughly 19 and a half inches or 19 and a quarter, somewhere around in there. And then we're gonna put our radials together, do the same thing. So I built that, put my antenna up, and would you believe that it's not resonant on 146? The antenna is too long. And so I tried to figure out what in the world is going on. So took everything back down, made sure I had everything connected right, coax was good, everything was good. In the ham radio community, we have mentors. We call them Elmers, E-L-M-E-R. Elmers are the guys that have been there and done that. They're the guys that teach the next generation coming along how to do it. So my closest Elmer is my dad. So I reached out to dad and dad said, hey, I remember in the early days there was two different numbers. There was the 936 for HF and there was another, uh, another number for VHF and UHF, but he couldn't remember what that number was. So I asked dad, I said, so what's your advice? He said, we'll start trimming the antenna leaves. And remember, if you got to trim, if you're going to trim a quarter inch off of one wire, you got to trim off of all four wires. He said, start trimming a quarter inch at a time, see what it looks like, and then when you get down to your desired center frequency, then you know what that number needs to be. Turns out, in my construction build, the way I'm putting it together, I'm going to teach you, that number is actually closer to 840, 840. We divide that by four because we're building a quarter wave antenna, it gives us 210. You're gonna divide 210 by the frequency, 146, which actually gives us about 17 and a quarter inches long that we want our target uh, wire length to be. Let's get started building the antenna. Now we've already cut our wires. Even though in part one I showed you some wire lengths and how to cut it, my, my math was wrong. You're gonna go back and you're gonna do your math on your own. 210 divided by 146, multiply that number times 12 and that'll give you your antenna length. Don't forget to account for the addition of the length in your uh, ring terminal, whichever ring terminal you choose to use, and then remove about half inch that you fold over each end to connect either to the ground triangle or to the 550 cord. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is we want to find us three good sticks. You want them two to two and a half inch, two and a half feet long, and then you want to put them together in the form of a triangle on the ground. You'll take your three wire ties and you're just going to snug each corner of that triangle up. Don't tighten it. It's very important. Once you get it put together, we're going to take the three radial ends of our jungle antenna and we're going to feed the wire underneath the wire tie. Remember, only about a half inch and make sure you fold it back over the wire tie so it's got a good snug fitting. Then cinch, it, cinch each wire tie down. On your leading end, that goes up to the 550 cord, you're gonna bend over about a half inch and that will connect in to your 550 cord. I just use a simple bowling, uh, a bowling knot to, to connect that into. We'll connect our coax to our banana connector and then we're gonna hoist our antenna up in the tree. Remember, don't let the wire touch a branch or a leaf if you can help it. That can detune the antenna. I always like to use about six inches to a foot away from the branch that I'm hoisting over. What's an antenna analyzer do? The antenna analyzer helps us figure out how efficient our antenna is working on a given frequency. Now for our SWR, we want as close to 1.0 to 1, and then we want 50 ohms on our impedance. Because remember I told you in part one, our coax and our feed point needs to be as close to 50 ohms for resistance as we can possibly get it. So 1.0 to 1 is as, clo as, as close as we can possibly get it in 50 ohms. Now when I did my math, 840 divided by 4, 210 divided by 146 times 12 gave me about 17 and a quarter inches. And that gave me pretty close to 146, about 1.05 and 50 ohms. I put it up, I tested it, it works great. It's a far improvement over my handheld antenna. Now if you use 936, is that gonna, is that gonna hurt you? No, it's not. 936 is the number to get you close. In teaching you how to build the antennas and teaching you how to learn and understand the jungle antenna, 
I want you to know how to get the most that you can possibly get out of your antenna system and your radio. Because when you get into the field, you may be on the extremes where every little bit helps. The last thing I want to leave you with is make sure that you don't just put this together and say, yep, everything looks good. You got to get out and try it. You got to train with it. You got to practice with it. You may find in your location or with the wire that you're using or coax that you use, you may find a different number. But one thing is for certain, you're not going to know if you don't get out and try. I'd love to hear your comments and feedback. So leave them at the video. Let me know what your, exper what your experiences are when you go try to build this. If you have questions, also drop me a line. I'd love to hear more about it. With Tactical Comms, I'm Matthew. Stay tactical.